Hi everybody and welcome back to Double Team. Today we will be discussing Madoka Magica, which is a magical girl kind of series with a uh, dark side. I think that's like the easiest how I can say it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's one of those things like at this point I think that everybody knows that Madoka is like a dark take on the magical girl so it's mm -hmm. not like a surprise anymore like it was at the time yeah yeah that's true um, it used to be and uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, when you watched it because I didn't watch it when it was airing no I watched it I think it was already done when I watched it but it mm. was not <clears throat> sorry it wasn't that long after it aired yeah um, I think it was the same for me. I remember seeing Arcada actually <laughs> recommending it to people and that's how I found it. So um, I checked it out I think like half a year after it aired or something like that. So I could marathon all of it and that is what I did as well because for me it was very um, addicting to watch because they had some good cliffhangers where I was like, okay. I, I'm confused, <laughs> but I want to see more. So that happened when I saw the full series and when it was done, I was very satisfied. So I immediately pre-ordered the DVD because I liked it that much. <laughs> um, it just really uh, surprised me. Yeah, I I don't have the DVD at this point, but it's definitely one of those shows that I watched and I didn't really know what I was getting into. Mm, I yeah. just knew that I was like supposedly a little bit different than all of the other magical girls that I've watched yeah. which we have a whole episode on that so <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about all of them but so it was like my first mature like or darker uh, magical girl and yeah. I had no idea mm. like as, as I was saying now like everybody knows what Madoka is try or did at the time but yeah. then for me it was a surprise Mm -hmm. So that was, I think that's the biggest thing that I remember about Madoka every time is like just that impact factor of watching it the first time when it wasn't that popular yet. Yeah, same. Um, I was just really surprised with how they did things. Also, uh, this was done by Studio Shaft and this was also my first introduction to Studio Shaft. So <laughs> for me, it was really interesting to see the animation as well because like the sound and the animation really over overwhelmed me, especially in the first episode when you have that whole dark scene with Madoka running and all of that. And the yeah. music by Kalafina is so great in that. <laughs> And that scene just got me into it. When I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm sold. I need to watch more of this because it looks really nice. Yeah, it, <laughs> you bring very good points because, like, one of the things that I find really interesting about Madoka is how the contrast between the opening theme and the end theme basically describes <laughs> the show. Because yeah. the opening theme is, like, the very cutesy magical girl type of song by Claris and yeah. then the ending theme is like super heavy Calafina just yeah. like this cheer is gonna go down this show and you should know it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, <laughs> that's true. So, it's great. <laughs> and yeah, I really like the art style basically for the same reason because mm -hmm. you have a lot of like soft pastel like not, not very harsh lines mm -hmm stuff like that all of the girls are drawn in a very soft like kind of childish way I yeah, guess if you look at sure. their their faces mm -hmm. and stuff um, but then like whenever they're in the fight scenes and you have all of those like kind of like hallucination style yeah. like for dogs going like and like scissors and yeah. you have no idea what's going on the screen and a lot of really weird effects it's a really it's one of the things that I like the most just that contrast Yep, exactly. The The whole thing with the fighting witches was also something that surprised me. Because I was actually expecting witches, you know, because <laughs> when yeah. they were talking about it. And then you see all of this, I don't know how to call it, uh, like you said. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I guess they just really went all the way to show that it's not like the same world. Because mm -hmm. a lot of series fall into the trap of being like, oh, this is kind of outside of the normal world, but it still follows normal world rules. Yeah, yeah, true. And they just threw all of that out of the window. They were like, this world is not reality. It's not supposed to make sense or look normal or yeah. just like 
<laughs> they just twisted <laughs> everything. It's not like you can have a sense of direction or mm -hmm. something like that. Even the sound in that world's really weird. Yeah, it's true. So. The, just like the monsters itself make a really weird sound. Yeah. I remember that for sure. Yeah, um, and even the proportions, because sometimes you have like really huge like flower things or just yeah. stuff with mouths, and sometimes it's like very little. You have, it's it's very disorienting, mm -hmm. and it's really nice. I really like that. Yep, exactly. So um, let's say we can talk about the characters a little bit because you know those are like central in the story. Um, and let's start off with Madoka herself because um, I remember seeing her being introduced and I didn't like her actually because I was mm -hmm. like, well, who is this girl who is so scared and like, I don't know, she just looked so vulnerable and when you start watching the series, you don't think she would become that strong or that powerful. Yeah. So, uh, but the series totally changed my mind about her. Like, I love her now. I think she's a good main character. Um, I think she changed well. If she wouldn't have changed, I probably still wouldn't not have liked her. So, but yeah. otherwise, no complaints about that. For me, like Madoka is a very standard by the book example of what yeah. the main character of a shoujo uh, magical girl anime is like. Mm. Because if you look at most of like the other ones, like Sailor Moon, for instance. The main girl is usually like the weak one, the crybaby, yeah, she's yeah. very unsure, she gets re really hesitant a lot of the times, and Madoka mm -hmm. like goes through the same process as the classical versions do. So I think they try to just keep those elements, and that's why she turned out that way. And I don't really dislike it. <clears throat> My main gripe with, I guess, the show as a whole with the character is that I appreciate Madoka on an intellectual level, like I can appreciate what it does, I can find it interesting, yeah. but I have zero engagement in terms of the characters. Oh, right, yeah. <clears throat> um, when it comes to the characters, there's one character that I really, really like, um, and that I can actually connect with, which is Homura. Mm -hmm. So, she was definitely my favorite for me, uh, although... In the beginning, she came off as a dick and blah, blah, blah. Like, she also has that typical <laughs> character yeah. uh, where she is that way. But I kind you could kind of see it coming that something was up and something was going to change anyway. So um, I liked her from the beginning. But before that, before she was, like, kind of introduced, I had uh, Mommy, I think. Mm -hmm. And Mommy was, like, for me, like, the heroine and she would be like the best and blah 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 yeah. and then it's like oh shit plot twist <laughs> um, I, I really like mommy like <clears throat> not in a I can relate to or like I'm really sad or something like that yeah. I like the fact that she's so maternal in terms of the other characters like she's the most she she appears to be the most level headed and like I yeah. got this everything True. is okay kind of character and made stuff look more fun or like more peaceful than it actually was at the yeah, beginning she did so i think she's like a really vital part of the show even though she doesn't get that much credit mm -hmm. because i mean she she's gone on episode three yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i think without her madoka madoka like the entire show wouldn't be what it is and people wouldn't have enjoyed it as much like just that twist is very vital for the show yeah yeah that's true because Actually, that twist made me even more interested in the show because I was like, if this is happening already, like, what is going to happen in the future in the show? Because mm -hmm. um, I didn't think they would take it that serious because yeah. that was, like, the first person that was dying already in the show. So you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, Yeah, then I mean, again, it all it. boils down to, like, the contrast in this show. That's, like, what Madoka does. Mm -hmm. that and before that episode, they made sure that everything looked rosy and yeah. lovely and stuff. With, of course, you had a little bit of foreshadowing and you could tell like some things were a little bit creepy or yeah. off-putting and you weren't sure what was going on, but you were kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> but still they were like, no, everything is fine and, and magic and stuff. <laughs> and then episode three was like, forget all of that. Yeah. <laughs> we will shatter all of your dreams and hopes for this. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly uh, what happens. Uh, so what what did you think of Homera then? Um, 
Homura grew on me towards the end of the show, obviously because her character development was like very late in the show. So I I like I really like one thing is the fact that she doesn't really have like a magical power. I yeah. mean she does, she has the time thing, but when yeah. it comes to like fighting, mm. she she had to learn how to like you use guns <laughs> too. It was <laughs> and badass. <laughs> I really, really like that part. The mm. fact that like you can fight even if you are not like super OP or yeah. like just build the power to fight for the people you like or for the things that you believe in mm -hmm. is I think a really a really good message. Yeah. Um in terms of the first part of the show, I really didn't I didn't care either way, I guess would be the thing to yeah. say. Because it's as you said, it's like a very typical uh I'm giving you the cold shoulder because actually we have like some stuff that went down in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's so true. yeah, I guess like in terms of the the things that are really necessary for the show to work, I'd say Mami and Homura are the two main elements. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily, I think, the better written characters as people. Of course, mm -hmm. Mami, like as much as I said, I really like the fact that she's there and mm -hmm. how she's portrayed. She is definitely a hundred percent a plot device. Yeah, oh, like yeah. she's there for that thing to happen, so that <laughs> you get like those feelings from the show. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. But and in kind of a reverse way, Homer is there so that things work out at the end. Yeah, and she's like vital for you to learn more about how witches uh, happen, which is really really cool. Like the fact that you have the magical girl transitioning to witch is really cool. Yeah. Um, I'd say in terms of actual people, per se, Sayaka is probably one of the better written. Yeah, I totally agree, because I, I wanted to talk about her as well, because when I saw her, well, I mean, not when I saw her, I guess, because she was like the typical best friend of Madoka, mm -hmm. but when she made her contract is where everything changed and yeah. how it got so much more interesting for the show as well because we could actually see how it goes and how it go how the progress is into uh changing into a magical yeah. girl and how you struggle with being that and that was just her feelings really came through when it came to her mm -hmm. and that's something that i really really enjoyed in the show and it's like you can tell what she's fighting for, which mm. gives her more appeal than many of the other characters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like Madoka, right until the end, <laughs> doesn't really have like a wish or something that she's yeah. really trying to defend. She's just there undecided. Mm -hmm. And Sayaka from the get-go, even though you don't know at the beginning, she's like, this is the thing that's important to me in my life and I'm trying to protect it. And it's kind of cute. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it really is. It was uh, really feelsy as well. Because, I mean, you could kind of see what she would wish for. Because we have that whole, like, foreshadowing, I guess, with the boy that she likes. And yeah, being sick. the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, you kind of hope she will do it anyways. Because you're like, oh, man, I feel so bad for the guy. And then, you know... Yeah, oh, and you can see, happens. like, you also have, through her character, you can see what happens when, like, dreams break or when mm. stuff goes into the despair phase. So she shows yeah. the entire, like, chain of things, like, try to protect what you really love and when you can't or when yeah. something goes wrong, what happens. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, that's why I think she's probably the better written character, even yeah. though she's not as vital to, like, the overarching plot. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally We agree. also have Sakura, was that her name? Was it, uh, is it the girl the, with the red hair? Yes. Um, it was Kyoko. Well, yeah, Sakura, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> she is, I wish we had more of her. Me too, I liked her, but, you know. Yeah. We, we had a backstory, like a small backstory about her family and what happened mm -hmm. and why she is like that, which I really appreciate because it yeah. only has 12 episodes, so they did a really good job on giving some backstory to all of the characters. Um, That's but, why I was like, I wish there was more of her because yeah. it's kind of like rushed so that you can get 
her view on the thing and it's yeah. really good because it's a different it's a very I guess a less naive view of mm -hmm. the world and like Madoka of course is like oh this is just I'm not sure what's going on but it's mental <laughs> girls yeah and Sakura is like life is dark and yeah. stuff happens and you better <laughs> not look at it that way <laughs> yeah uh, I she was just really funny at the beginning as well I just like her character um uh, although, like like I said before, all of these characters we've seen before, it was nice to see them together because they're all very different from each other and they have yeah. different uh, points of views of, uh, of life and all of that stuff. But I agree, I want it more because it felt like we got her introduction in that, I don't know, church or whatever it was with the apples. And um, yeah. after that was done, it was like, okay, so this this was a part about her and that that's kind of it, which was sad. Um... For me, I think one of the things in which Madoka fails when it comes to this aspect of it mm -hmm. is that the characters, even the ones that are very good standalone, there's not a very tight interaction yeah. between the cast. Like, it's not a very believable, like, either friendship or any type of relationship for the most of the group. Mm -hmm. Like, Sakura doesn't really interact with most people, of course, you have Sayaka and Madoka, but it's like, yeah. since I think part of it is just because it's such a short show, mm -hmm. they kind of have to cram the, we are beginning to be friends, and then, like, shit goes down, and then everything is a mess, like, yeah. in <laughs> episodes. So, it, it was kind of hard to develop actual, like, interactions, even if they were doing character development. Yeah, for sure. So, but character design, I guess, is a cool thing to bring up. Yeah. I was reading that the um, artist had notes about why all of the characters were drawn the way they were. And it was really cool. I didn't read all of them, but I remember mm -hmm. that like for Madoka you have all of the... She wanted her battle uh, outfit to be the more like traditional yeah. magical girl. Like more frills, less functional and stuff mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> uh, like the a lot of like the white in the socks because she was the most naive and all of that and I found it really interesting to see the process so go read that I guess everybody because cool. it's not just because oh I like blue this is the blue character yeah 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 <laughs> which I mean you still have that and that's okay like every like magical girl show or nearly every show that has like a group of characters kind of has a color scheme of course, and the, yeah. so and that's just for you to be able to recognize them, I yeah, guess, like the exactly. Power Rangers, just yeah, that thing. Exactly. <laughs> but but she thought it through in a really interesting way, so, mm. yeah. That's we didn't discuss one character that's very important. QB? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a cat in here, which, It's you not know, a cat, it's an I Asian. know, <laughs> but it looks like a cat, like everyone calls it a cat anyways. Um, but yeah, QB. Oh man, I hate that character so much. I love that character. He's the best character of the show. <laughs> I mean, it's like a hate love relation because I, yeah. I mean, I know that character has to be there because that character actually made me more excited about the show as well and had some pretty awesome moments in it. Um, but then again, I hate it for like the girls for what happens and all that sh uh, stuff and like why he is doing this and all. But uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, for me, as I was saying, like, since I don't really connect or relate to the girl characters too much, yeah, I don't really have that hate for, oh, you're doing bad things to these girls I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have, like, enough distancing from mm. the plot and the characters that I can look at QB without that bias, yeah. I guess. So for me, QB so. is just, like, super interesting on an intellectual level because yeah. it's the whole... It's not like it's being bad because it's just a different approach on like it's an alien, it doesn't think like yeah. humans. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna fuck you over. It's not like it doesn't it's have not feelings. like the Saw movies or something like that, in which mm. someone is doing something bad to you. It's like Yeah. They don't have those creatures don't have human feelings mm -hmm. and they're trying to save the world in their own way and trying to gather energy. Yeah. And so it's like a very, I think it's a really interesting intellectual exercise because it's like, 
it makes you think about first of all just like how relative things are to your point of view of course but the fact that not having feelings is usually scarier than having bad feelings to people because yeah, yeah, you can't true. really relate you're like i don't i don't if you had like some sort of hate or beef or mm -hmm. i could i could see it but i can't because you have like nothing going yeah. on so i really like that part mm -hmm. yeah that's very true um, but that's just me i like weird characters i mean i, I know like most him people too. hate cube <laughs> yeah, for me it's like love hate because I mean uh, I want him to be there. The show wouldn't be the same without QB. So, oh man, I still I still see that scene before me where QB gets shot like so many times, and I'm like, oh my god, what happened? Oh no! And I'm like, wait, why am I sad about this? I don't like this character. <laughs> I was confused at that point, but yeah. I don't know. I I just really and needed that even one to be there. Eats some of his like old forms and stuff. It's really interesting to see because mm -hmm. like for a human character, if you saw a human character just like come back to life and eat its old self to like yeah. regain stuff, you'd be like, ugh. True. Very so, true. <laughs> Like, it's one of those signs that it's not a human character at all. Like, <laughs> humans couldn't, couldn't do that. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> what else? I think we discussed all of the main characters that yes. are important to the show. So um, I would just say we could do like our overall thoughts. And also I kind of want to know what you think of the ending. Because a lot of people seem to have problems yeah. with the ending. So I'm curious what you think about it. I guess we can start by that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't watch the movies yet. Okay. So I'm not going to like include that. Mm -hmm. And I know that changes the ending to a lot of people. So I'm not going to get into that discussion. For me, I think the ending worked in the way, well, in the right way for the show, I guess would be, mm -hmm. would be the way to describe it. It's not something that I was particularly excited to see, but it's also, I think it's a better way than to see like a Shonen-like showdown at the end, because mm -hmm. that wouldn't fit the show at all. Yeah. So I kind of saw it. I kind of saw it coming that with Homura and her time things that it would come down to something like that. I wasn't really expecting them to like get Madoka out of reality as a god entity. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, it's like not something that usually you place in an equation when you're thinking, oh, where can this show go? Yeah. But I think, I think they placed it in a way that makes my suspension of disbelief is like, I can deal with this. Mm -hmm. It's also like, it's it doesn't sound like bullshit too much compared to other shows that try to pull stuff like that, I guess. So yeah. for me, it's fine. I, I'm not upset at the ending, and I wasn't at the time either. I just think it like suited the show. Mm -hmm. On another hand, I also didn't never placed Madoka in like, like the entire show, not her, but on like, 11 out of 10 scale. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't a letdown. I think a lot of the people that didn't like the ending were expecting far too much out of the show. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's why. For me, it's like a solid, I guess I'd say, a 9 throughout its entirety mm -hmm. or something like that. So for me, it worked. But did you like it or did you make you like, uh,. No, I actually really liked it. Um, it also kind of surprised me with the whole thing, with what happened with Madoka and stuff. And just everything with Homura and her uh, got me the feelings. And I, I loved it. I do have to mention, like, I did see the movies, but mm -hmm. my opinion didn't change. Like, I still okay. love the ending for uh, the anime and actually even more than uh, the movies. So, yeah, I have nothing uh, against either of them. The movies are just very different, I feel like, and if you've seen the series first, it's just... You, I feel like everyone uh, likes that one more. Yeah. Um, it just feels right as well, the ending, I feel like. Yeah. Like, when I watched it, I was like, oh, okay, I'm satisfied with this ending, because they did a really good job for 12 episodes to actually make this work. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was it was nice, and the animation was gorgeous at the end as well, which I really liked. And yeah, that, that it was throughout the entire show. Yeah. Really, 
the animation. And when it comes to like you saying like it would be a nine throughout, I would totally agree with that because it's it is one of my favorite shows, but it is because it stays good the whole time for me, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have these ups and downs for me either. So that is what makes it good and enjoyable. I do think that Madoka is one of those shows that the impact value for it is really important. Yeah. So like watching it the first time is the experience. Rewatching it 10 times is not the thing. It's yeah. not one of those shows that you should or I think or need to rewatch that many times because mm-hmm. it just loses if you keep doing it. Yeah, I mean, I have it on DVD, but I only watch it like once a year and then I can like have that feeling again of like, oh shit, yeah, that happened. I almost forgot about that. Or I uh, watch it with a friend who has never watched it before yeah. because it's always fun to see how they react to it. To mm-hmm. like all of those uh, moments where there's like plot twists and all of that. And I think this is definitely one of those shows that is very interesting to discuss with people because yeah. it is so different from all of the other stuff. Um, yeah, so. I must say that I was a little bit uh, scared to discuss it at first because <laughs> it's just been talked about so much. It's kind of like a tired topic at this point mm-hmm. and everybody has like super crazy theories about Madoka. True. Uh, so for like the longest time I didn't really want to talk about Madoka too much. <laughs> but but I'm glad we actually did because it's interesting to see how we place ourselves in a different position towards the show even though we both like it. Yeah. And it's actually it's it's really rare for you to get the feels from an ending yeah. in which I was like I felt nothing throughout <laughs> the show. <laughs> I but I do have to mention like Madoka Magica was one of those series that I watched when I started watching anime again. Yeah. So it was before I never checked out any anime that shocked me or that gave me feelings or that was emotional and like the art was beautiful. Like for me, Madoka was a perfect thing to begin with because yeah. it had everything that I had not seen yet and like the studio as well. Like that was a great introduction to Shaft for me. So. For me, it just really surprised me, and that first watch is everything to me. So for me, that is why I like it that much. And yeah, of be- course. Yeah, for me, it was just very different because I was at a different time, like <laughs> in my life as well. So yeah. yeah, that's probably the better way to watch it is to have like some experience with magical girls as a kid, and then like do nothing for ages, mm-hmm. and then watch Madoka. <laughs> yep, exactly. Because you can be shocked and you'll be like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> For sure. Mm-hmm. So, I guess I guess that's it. Also, the soundtrack is amazing. I know we oh, just it this, but it's, <laughs> it's Katsura Yuki, which is one of my favorite anime composers. So, yeah. yeah. He's great. Okay, so, um, I guess that's it for our episode. Yay! If... If you guys want to let us know what you think about Madoka, feel free to put that in the comments. We're, we always like to read and uh, comment to your comments. <laughs> so yeah. um, for the next double team, we have something special because uh, we've never done this before. But since E3 happened, we're actually going to discuss that because we, bo- we both actually saw a lot of the like... Um, yeah, I leave stuff. the free super hardcore this year, so... Yeah. <laughs> happen so more games yay so we're gonna discuss that and after that of course we're gonna have like the end of the season so we're gonna discuss that afterwards um so you can look forward to both of those and uh yeah that's it i hope you enjoyed our discussion and we will see you guys soon Bye. bye